they're not going to ban Gyro versus EG. And I asked him why, and he said, it's because Fear plays so many different things, we don't want that element of surprise when we're facing versus Fear. We want, we want them to beat, uh, we want them to play Gyro. Mm. Well, that's interesting. I mean, if, if we look at the bans, like EG has to ban the Wisp, because C9 is one of the best Wisp teams, if not the best Wisp team in the world. And they're first pick too. But uh, getting Chen for them, they feel very comfortable with Chen. Like, we have seen them picking Chen up as much as they can. But the Lashrak pick is quite interesting. I would also be a bit, um, think about the Brood ban as well. First two Brood ban is not that common. Yeah. Especially because the way it's been this tournament, usually Brood has been first two if the enemy team has draw Visage. Mm -hmm. But seeing as C9 uh, ban Visage first, I'm not sure why uh, EG decided to ban the Brood. Well, looking at EG, it's like uh, when they play an opponent like C9, especially if they're lost in the first day, they always go specifically. Like they'll draft specifically against the team they're facing. If you look at their picks, first pick Lash Rock, Shadow Demon, that's so uncommon. Like no one does that. But EG does these kind of things quite often, actually. So they they have some idea going on how they want to play against this team. Like they they baited the Chen pick. Seems like they also give them Jaro. I think that's very dangerous. But uh, maybe they have the better idea against it. I guess they're just betting on winning all the lanes with yeah. SD Lushak. I mean, it might uh, it might be Lushak on core anyway. But I think the same idea will still apply. Yeah, I mean, they they probably saved the core or support idea for now. Just having the lash rock, there's a reason for it. They'll decide later on if they actually want to core it or not. But it seems like they want to apply pressure on their on C9 safe lane. Yeah. So it looks like Cloud9 has been going away from their early DK pickups. Their early uh, what other hero did they like? I think they would have picked DK if it wouldn't be for Gyro. Mm. Like, uh, I We're think C9 is. Didn't expect that outcome in the draft. Or even uh, Beastmaster has been yeah, a hero that I usually pick up in the first two. But I guess they value Gyra Copter over, over the two other heroes. And yeah. I'd say that's uh, quite reasonable because if you see that EG is trying to uh, win every lane with this uh, roaming SD or whatever, uh, picking up a Gyro that you know will just naturally win you your sa safe lane is uh, it's quite good. I mean, now we, we have uh, EG who wanted to pick C9 D heroes. Like, I've I think EG knew like 99% that C9 will go for Chen and Gyrocopter. Yeah. But at the same time, we have C9 who will feel very comfortable having these two heroes. They really love these heroes. Yeah, and he said there's like a couple players that you don't want to give Gyro, he said himself, as well as Hal. <laughs> <laughs> and he, yeah. he just said Gyro is just way too strong in lane. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's happy that he picked up Gyro, although maybe not 100%, just because he's probably worried like, did EG want us to pick this or? Keeper of the light. Yeah, straight pick call, didn't Cloud even think Nine's twice. They're very pick. set on the strategy by now. They have to ban the DK because DK Chen is... Like DK Chen Gyro is... Uh, if you remember in 2013, that was one of the monster combinations during TA3 and the time before. You don't want to give it away. And... Uh, well what, I, what I find interesting here is that uh, uh, C9 bans Bounty Hunter, uh, maybe because they played against Vici, who played a beach uh, against their Chen. And maybe they think uh, EG is going to do the same. Yeah. But then EG responds with a Night Stalker ban. And uh, we haven't really seen any Night Stalker play coming out of any team. Um, I mean, C9 is actually the only team that plays Night Stalker ever since the new patch so hit. Counter, I think. counter to Keeper X. Uh, that's true. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, if they did want to pick Keeper. It seems like they really wanted to coddle anyway. They yeah, had they, to they ban really the Night did. Stalker. Banning the bounty is just for convenience reasons. They lost to VG against their bounty under. Even though the bounty in that game didn't have that much impact, but they want to play the normal Chen game. They don't want to adapt to putting Chen off lane and things like that. They just want Chen to go into woods, farm up, get his mech, control the lanes a little bit, and then they want to steamroll. Aren't things going to be a lot different though now that they don't have a DK to pair with the Chen? Uh, not necessarily. They have the Gyrocopter, so instead of playing around the DK, they just mm. play around the Gyrocopter. Yeah. They can take very early game fights. Like, when Gyro hits 6, his ulti AoE is huge now. Can just win you the team fight right away. And there's a reason Gyro's pretty much banned every game. And Rubik's like, just, you know, Rubik just goes well with anything. Yeah. Ten seconds Rubik remaining. is the bro you just want to have in your team. <laughs> it's good to be around. He combinates very well Five with Chen too. Remaining. They have uh, huge ganking potential. Yeah, Rubik Gyro is like one of the strongest safe lanes as well. And at the same time, Rubik's passive null field is it's pretty good against EG zeros. Yeah. And uh, Rubik passive should never be underestimated. It's actually, I think it's the second best spell of Rubik right now. 
Do you like taking like one or two points in tel telekinesis and then picking up? It always depends uh, how good the game goes. If you're playing from behind, it's better to get an outfield, but if you have the chance to snowball, you should just get telekinesis. Since the range increases by 25 per level, so you get easier initiate on from smoke ganks, and the uh, duration is longer too. Hmm. But the, the null field itself, like, even if you don't get it early, later on it will, it will just be very good against the caudal wave and the, the less shrug lightning. It works on creeps now too, so if you're trying to push into the yeah, base. Yeah, that's, that's a huge deal too. The caudal wave will be mitigated, so. They're taking up a lot of their bonus time here, going down to 17 seconds. A very unusual lineup from EG. You think this will be fear on the Lesh in the safe lane? Uh, I would assume so since yeah. they picked up the, the Coddle. Clockwork, not necessarily a hero that can really deal with the Rubik Gyro. Uh, Lane, what do you think it's, about it's that matchup? It's a weird pick actually, because Rubik itself is one of the better heroes yeah. to have against the Clock offlane. Um, do you think they might aggro try? Uh, I thought that's EG's plan from the beginning with these picks. But I don't know if you want clock safe lane, especially if you do not know what uh, C9's uh, offlaner is yet. Yeah, that's true because there are there are a lot of heroes that just destroy clockwork in lane. If uh, C9 Five wants to pick that up, yeah, but clock in general, like his uh, rocket flare, is a very key spell right now to scout out Roshan and movements of Chen. Maybe that's the reason why they picked him up. Also, they need someone who goes in and creates chaos. They don't have that hero yet. Uh, Phoenix. I feel like C9 is getting everything they want right now. They, I'm quite sure they feel very confident with their draft right now. I think so too. Uh, EG's lineup doesn't really have any egg killers. Like if you um, just look at C9's heroes, they look so brutal together. The team fight potential, ganking potential, good on lane, good late game. On EG's side, it's like you don't really know what they want to do yet. Do they want to push? But you can't. You can't really Five force the push that well remaining. against Gyro, Phoenix, even Rubik is good against pushes to some extent. So we're pretty much questioning whether or not PPD knows what he's doing. Uh, I mean, like, you have to take the boxes in Dota, like laning, ganking, mm -hmm. all these things, and Roshan and EG heroes, they have no Roshan potential. That's something you never want in your in your lineup. Especially if you're on, uh, on the dire side. Yeah, and they're also on dire side too. And on top of that, they, they don't even have a hero that can kill Ancients. Like right now, they can't even touch the Ancients. Diabolic Edict! Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Leshrac can do it, but it's not yeah, the most yeah, efficient, know, right? Know, it's, it's a joke. Compared to a Gyro who will just farm this five stacked Ancients in, in one minute, Leshrac will farm one stack of Ancients. Yeah. So it looks like Cloud9, they have multiple ways of winning. They can win through team fights, they can right. win through yeah. out economizing, they can win just through lanes. Yeah. They have just a far more versatile and well-rounded lineup. Well, EG has still some things going on for them. They have like a really good way to get map control, now with the Klinks especially. Mm -hmm. like they can just uh, take control of the map. They have Rocket Flare, they have Klinks running around. Coddle provides a lot of map control because he's uh, like he can push out lanes very well. He can defend very well on his own. While C9's lineup is uh, still stuck to really one main thing and that is team fighting. But maybe EG just wants to dodge the teamfights till they hit a certain timing and they can catch Cloud9 out of position. I mean, they certainly have a lot of AoE to stall pushes. Clinks with Orchid maybe can deal with the Phoenix Egg, so that kind of shores up that weakness. Clinks decent versus Chen, uh, too. Has a lot of HP, can tank through Gyrocopter Burst in a BKB man fight later on. Yeah. It seems to be a pretty good last pickup, I'd say. It's, it's a cool last pick for sure. But uh, this patch is a lot about snowballing. So I think if C9 just gets the edge early game, mm -hmm. I don't think EG can stop them. While EG has to outplay them really hard. All right, we'll round out the last pick. Brewmaster for it's, Fata. It's another teamfight hero, control hero. Like if you just compare the teamfight potential of both lineups, it looks pretty dire for EG. Yeah, I'm thinking it really the way EG has thought about this game is that they just gamble on the lanes. Yeah. Uh, I assume they're going to go with something like a Caudal Clockwork offlane to just disrupt the Garakard with Rubik and keep the Chen occupied uh, while they have the SD Clank safe lane, which should, uh, in theory, destroy the Phoenix. Uh, as far and it's, it, it is uh, Sumail playing list track, so I assume he's going to go mid as well against the Brewmaster. No, yeah. I'm not sure how that matchup is. I assume it's okay for list track. Yeah, it's decent. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think Panda cares too much. But it should be alright. Yes, yeah, Sumail should get a decent amount of farm. I mean, yeah. Lushrak's far Five more easy to kill, though. Remaining. So, a little worried about 
Samil not having a good start. And as you said, it is a really big coin flip for EG in the lanes. If they have the matchups that they want, if the laning phase goes as they want, maybe they can stall the push Prepare until Clinks buys them enough map control, until Kado gets his Ags. But up until then, it's a risky way, risky draft. I feel, uh, look at the lanes, Clock's going off lane. Gyro Rubik is it's probably the worst lane for Clock. I don't Ooh. think there's a worse lane yeah, for Clock. Right? I, I mean, they already have the Shadow Demon Scout, too, for Roche, I, I suppose. But, I mean, it it's not... I, I don't think it's a great matchup at all, either. If you actually look at this, Kato bought a Calling Blade. Oh. So I'm assuming it's going to be a straight jungle with Kato. It seems a bit greedy. But uh, Shadow Demon clings, they can deal on with Phoenix on their own. So they can give Aoi a lot of space. Seems like I mean this is definitely something EG has prepared uh, beforehand. Yeah, uh, I want to know the Shadow Demon ulti. Does it kill off the chain creeps still? Like it used to do that. Like they just killed off the chain creep instantly. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if they changed it. I have not seen the interaction. Uh, I was thinking if maybe that's another reason why they just picked Shadow Demon. Especially if Shadow Demon gets to Aghanims at some point, you can just kill off the free creeps of Chen right away. I am not sure if that works. I would imagine not. I it used to work, that's what I know. It still kills the courier too, so it probably works. Nice try by Bone Seven, trying to snag that bounty rune. One one for the bounties and keep it alight. What is his item build aside from he has two clarities? Yeah, it looks like a straight jungle build coming out from him. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, just two clarities. And I, I assume it's gonna be cliff jungling? And then uh, stack, stack both camp? Seems so. Yeah. Uh, no, that's a very good move by Universe. That's the best you can do against this kind of lane. Yeah. Misery with boots first. No smoke. Is there a smoke on the Chen? The pole is not blocked though, so no. I assume uh, Misery is just going to pull right away. Yeah. And then it's... Cockroach will still get level 2, but I'm not sure if he's how much he's going to get after that. Oh, Bone 7 takes a lot of damage from the initial disruption. Yeah, this is a no lane for Bone 7. If yeah. AG will yeah. play this top lane correctly and not push the lane, the Phoenix won't even get a single level anymore. So, do you think, who do you think has the worst matchup, Bone 7 or Universe? Uh, actually, Bone 7 does. Definitely Bone 7. Uh, Clockwork, I mean, you can still play quite safely. Uh, yeah, because yeah and you can do the creep block thing, which Universe is doing. Yeah. I mean, they last click uh, things. Oh, there we go. Oh, there goes the cell. Yeah. There's a mango on the gyrocopter. That's interesting. 6.84b, starting it nerf. So it looks like Sumail will go through a no edict build. You see Bone7 is like trying to do something. He's not sure yet what he can do. Klinks is one of the strongest save laners he can play against. He has one more lightning coming out. Farah has to be a little bit scared here. He's got his ball on now though. He should be yeah. okay. No, but as you said, Bone7 doesn't have a role in this game at all. I yeah. mean, he can't go top at all. Um, so, I mean, PPD uh, can just do these things, and there's nothing to stop him, because Chen's farming jungle. That's, uh, that's really, really nice from PPD. Predicted Bone7 what he wants to do. And he took his rune, too. Yeah. He's making Bone7 completely useless at this point. And also getting a lot of information for Aoi so he can jungle safely. Looks like it will take him quite a long time to get level 2. He did miss his uh, clarity, but... He has a lot stack. of stacks, though. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, very typical for Aoi. He's a very efficient oh, player. Misery with oh. the haste. I think the bottle did get transferred, but... It's going to hurt all Sumail in the mid lane. That's a very good play by Misery. I think uh, he got that play because he, he actually dewarded the unit of his ward on bottom. Um, it was... Oh, yeah, he did. It was by the, the pole camp to the right. Yeah. And I, I saw he had a sentry. It was like uh, below that ward somewhere. Uh, so he actually got the ward, and with that ward gone, there's no vision of the Rubik. So yeah. he picks up the haste, gets a four you kill. No, Rubik and Chen, they have uh, a lot of freedom to yeah. do any moves they want to. For now, they decide to farm up the Chen. Yeah, so Mile so has to be uh, aware that he see doesn't see Chen and Rubik on the map now, so he's going to have to play safer in mid. Yeah. We see. Uh, Big Daddy is doing the same thing as always. He's taking a lot of camps. Yeah. He's just waiting for the Wildkin. Who do you think is getting the better trade off in this early game with pretty much Bone 7 getting nothing, but at the same time, both of C9 supports are, I think, doing much better than EG's? I guess PPD is getting a lot of information for them, but 
it's, it's super even, just uh, AG has a little bit of edge because the Clockwork is actually getting something compared to the Phoenix. Yeah. Very aggressive play by Envy. And he's not skilling the rockets. Uh, I saw a lot of gyros Radiant prefer to not get rocket, especially under. after the nerf. But personally I think it's you shouldn't skip on the rocket, no matter what. Yeah, I think, I mean, one of it is just way too good. I mean, it gives vision, too. It yeah. tells you exactly where they're going to go. Well, especially if you have a mango. Mm -hmm. Probably would have gotten a kill, but... Possibly, yeah. yeah. We'll never know. <laughs> anyway, I think, uh, as you said before, with how even this game is, uh, I think it a lot of it comes down to the rotations of C9 support when they decide to go uh, and start doing stuff. Because Carlos is going to chill in the jungle. And PP is just gonna chill between top and mid. Yeah, so May is opting to go for base. Uh, what is the level of the panda? So he's, he's five. Yeah. They're waiting for the six on panda and then they wanna do a move right away. Because you always wanna use the split cooldown as soon as possible. And with Chen, you have a lot of possibilities. Like you can force uh, a fight on the tower, something like that. Can we uh, look at the Chen? Yeah, he, has he's a, he picked up a smoke, but I don't know who's picked it up. Bound 7 farming with the Chen. Did they kill the stack? I don't think they killed it yet. No. Nope. Going for one more. That's huge for C9. He's just waiting for that Wildkin creep. It's just not coming up. They can probably do it with those two creeps. I don't know if they have and enough mana on them. This uh, <laughs> Dark Trolls. This is quite annoying for uh, for No Tail, actually. Yeah, this is very sad for him. Like, he could have had the Wildkin already like one minute ago or two minutes ago. He would already be level 5 and do some moves with Misery. But that's Dota 2 for you. Dota 2. <laughs> so now he's going to the troll camp and saying, guys, this game sucks. It's Can't another change it. It's not a D-word or what in mid. Let's be a bit careful. If he lands the stun, he might die. Yeah, EG with the severe lack of vision. Their top ward is about to run out. They didn't have eyes on bottom. Their mid ward got D-warded. Yeah, it seems like Aoi also started farming his stack at this point. And it's pretty sad for the Chen. If you look, Aoi's level 6 wow. already. He's just having a very beautiful game. Very smooth game. While uh, Chen is uh, struggling to find a wild can creep. Do you think Chen and Rubik should just smoke and try and put some pressure somewhere, make PVD guess a little bit, make Aoi? I mean, they they have around? it on their minds. They're, they're just really waiting for this wild can creep, like for two, three minutes already. Mm. And then, like, if you're set on one idea, you want to pull through. Because if you create too much chaos in your ideas, the game will be just like, very hard to play for your team. I mean, they very well might not get another one, though. Uh, they already decided to just, let's try something, but you see how inefficient it is compared to just having a tornado there. They're actually struggling to kill this camp. Yeah. Like, this is not going good for C9 at all. Uh, they might just move the panda there to uh, help them out. Yeah. RNG not very, not very good to C9 this early game. How many ancient stacks do they have up, if any? Just one. The ancient stacks are not that important, like at least for now. The Chen stacks, they are the most important factor for C9. Chen was the first pick, that means they value this hero the most in their lineup. But this hero just cannot shine right now. Well, at least Bon7 picked up some, some decent levels out yeah. that stack, He's now level 4. Don't you think they could have like smoked around and killed Universe on bottom and put some more pressure on that tower? Oh, they could have done that, but uh, generally the way you want to play Chen is you want to farm up quickly and get this mech as soon as possible. And level 5, level 6 too, that's mm -hmm. the most efficient play. Just killing one Clockwork doesn't really change the game. It gives you 300 gold for the first blood and some AoE gold for your teammates, but there's nothing more Radiant to that compared to just farming up with Chen and Gyro is free farming anyway, like it's not like he's struggling against the Clockwork. Mm -hmm. So you, you always have to make trades in Dota. Killing is not always the best option. True, true. Well, how's old PBD doing? Looks like he's really struggling in net worth territory, always trying to look for where he's Chen... He's getting good levels though. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm surprised he's level four and a half. Um, hmm. See, EG is doing the first move. This is Going very good for EG. Yeah, they rotated the Kling's bottom and they also had the smoke with the SD and the hasty the last <laughs> That's a very good play. I mean, C9 seems to know something's up. I mean, Universe is playing like on the opposite side of the creeps. They have to know yeah. that something's going on. Yeah. 
I think the the idea of moving five heroes or four heroes it's a good idea because you need to do that. That's a huge call down. Oh, nice call down comes out. Sumail hits a split earth. Fado with the Brewmaster split throws a rock at Sumail, but there's not really too much follow up. Fear is plinking away at him. Bone seven comes in from the left side. I think they'll get him with the next uh, Earth Prism. Yeah, he still has a regen in his bottle, but I don't think he's going to make it out alive. Magic Stick popped, Sumail, oh, yes. Phoenix ticks it down. And at the end of the day, only one person has oh, died. Oh, oh my wow. goodness, wow. He just bought the bling in the side shop, I think. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, it's your boy Fada yeah, right that's there. That's guys. <laughs> one of the best mid players in the world. That was pretty slick, I must say. Um, that, I mean, that went really well for AG still, even when they... If they wouldn't have lost the Lash Rock, it would have been just amazing for them. But you, you saw why you would need the rocket missile on Gyrocop there. Because I think they would have just gotten the kill on the Lash Rock, no matter what, with one rocket missile on him. Mm. Yep. Oh, Fear? he's gonna get the Courier too. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. This game is just going uh, in EG's way. I mean, the Chen pretty much has like had very minimal impact in this game. He's forced yeah. to chill at his T1, gets ganked, died, and now they can't really put out any pressure. Everyone's huddling around the T1s trying to scrounge up some levels. And if you see EG's how they place the heroes, they move their position one hero, clinks, to just uh, enemy woods, and now they want to keep applying pressure there. They know split is down, so they're not afraid of any big fights coming up for now. And they also have, uh, like in the meantime, even through that rotation to bottom, Kato was just farming woods. So yeah. I assume Kato is super rich. Yeah, he's almost got his Aghanims. Oh, he's rushing Aghanims. You don't see that often. Man, he is actually ridiculously farmed. Yeah. And this is uh, one of EG's strength. They're very good at enabling the players at what they're good at. And oh, he's good at farming creeps. <laughs> <laughs> So he's gonna have very early. This is the fastest Aghanims on a support Cordal. Oh, I see think. a smoke come out from Big Daddy No Tail, Fada, as well as EE. E. They do have decent oh, vision. He's gonna go for it. He's fishing for the hook. Oh, there's a ward though. Universe gets lifted up. Rocket Barrage, and it looks like he will perish to the Chen Creeps. Bone 7 comes into the right side and will slay PPD. Fear will make it out in time. And C9 retaliate. With a quick 2-0. That was a very good jump by Fader. He jumped two heroes. Clink sent the Shadow Demon. Oh, He's going for even more. Does Lush Shark have a TP? He does. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. So what Fader did on bottom lane, he zoned out the uh, Clink and the uh, Shadow Demon. So the clock was an easy kill and they even got the Shadow Demon right away. It was so very do good you coordination. Do you think there's any hope for C9 to get map control once Kato starts joining the fight and gets his eggs? Uh, I mean, the game is still very open, in my mm. opinion. They just they really have to play around their ultimates, that is uh, the split and the Phoenix Egg. I mean, won't EG just pick and choose fights though with Rocket scouting, with Universe scouting, with Clink scouting, with Coddle scouting, and then just... I mean, once C9 will hit their tier 1 towers at least, EG will have to respond in some way or the other. Mm -hmm. It's either going to be by split pushing or taking the fight. But I think EG is very comfortable taking any fights right now. Yeah. And they, they do have the Aghanims. It's a 12-minute Aghanims on Kordal. It's a very different build coming out from Clinks, the anti-Chen build. Yeah, I think that's so. their idea with the the Clinks anyway, just anti-Chen. Because I assume he's going to go for Helmet Dominator, and then he has the Death Pact, and he's just going to remove two creeps off Chen instantly. And when Chen is this gimped already, it's, yeah. uh, it's quite hard for him to deal with his Clinks. He can get a Midas. Just slay all three of them on the spot. <laughs> that could work. I mean, C9 understands that this Coddle has Aghanims, and it's just putting a lot of pressure on them now. Because they they just see this support Coddle as, a, as <laughs> it's the most net worth in the game, actually. Well, I don't know if we can Zumail call it support. Leads in with lightning on EE. From behind, Clinks with a DD will quickly finish off the Gyrocopter. Bone 7, he is level 6, hasn't... Yet uses Egg, will get a TP out. Sumail with a blind stun, will narrowly miss, and looks like this should probably be a free tower for EG. The EG keeps taking over their, their jungle. Like Fierce playing very nicely. He just keeps camping the jungle. He doesn't give an opening to Chen. Gyro seems stuck there too. Yeah, Gyro hasn't really been able to do that much in this game. He's uh, limiting himself by going bottom lane. They, they already have to like do something else. Mm. Oh, Fierce gets dusted up. 
Rock will come out. Sumail tries to save him with a stun, but... He's gonna get the tornado. Oh, that's very nice. He gets the Earthspirit stun off. I assume this is gonna be a dead to track as well. well. That's what C9 needs to do. They just need to play around to split. Every time they can take this kind of fight, they can just roll back into the game. Yeah. I mean, the, the way of stopping split is just really hard for EG. They pretty much have to get, what, like a... Instant disrupt on him to a Lesh stun, that's like almost impossible. Yeah. Lesh Rex getting what a bloodstone clean. There's also the Chen heal and the mech. Yeah, yeah, I I don't really see them being able to stop the Brewmaster in the team fights. I'm surprised they made their first move with the Caudal Ags like right at 12.30, which is 30 seconds after nighttime hits. Yeah. I mean, EG's constant thought or strategy throughout this game has been to evade the the enemy jungle, so mm -hmm. Kato was forced to move down since yeah. all his teammates were down there. And also they took the fight on nighttime. Um, yeah. It's a bit of a sloppy decision. Oh, he might get the deny. Very patient with his illusions. Fada gets stunned up mm -hmm. and will pay for getting that tower yes, last hit. You can see in his stash, he didn't lose a single gold there. Like He bought all his items, got the tower for his team. If you're playing around a sentry war, Cloud9 pretending that they don't know. Misery will oh, lift him up now. into a centaur. He will get stunned up. Still around half HP. Tessa Faith comes out. Gets defensively disrupted. There is the egg, though. Sumail will miss a stun on Big Daddy Noto. Universe coming in from behind with a clockwork hookshot. Misery locked into the cogs, almost certain to perish. And at the end of the day, looks like Big Daddy is going to die as well. Oh my goodness. No Bruce split. Is yeah, and this is just what C9 has to avoid. Yeah. Because at this point, they should realize that EG just wants to invade their jungle. Yeah. Like, no one is on the top side of the map. It's completely EG open. EG has been doing this for eight minutes now, sitting in their jungle. On top of that, they don't have the Brewmaster. Yeah. And they really have to understand that they cannot take a fight without the Brewmaster split. I mean, it's very like tempting to go for the clinks you just see there on the side. And you want to grab a quick kill, but EG is there anyway. They're nowhere on the map. No one has been on top lane of EG for a very long time already. Yeah, he's a little bit tankier than most Klink's too. That extra armor, I thought he would die to that burst. I think if you look at Klink's item build, I think he's rather tanky. Yeah. He has the Helm of Dominator, that's 5 armor, plus the life leech and, and the strength crit. Yeah. He's not gonna get it. And this is a uh, fierce gameplay. Like he's doing the correct thing in my opinion. He just chills in the jungle. He's, he wants to ruin Chen's game and this is one way of them getting a lot of map control, because they constantly know what C9 is doing. If they're not in the jungle, it means that they have to be top. Yeah. Oh, Cloud9 now trying to push during daytime. Brewmaster Ultimate is up. Oh, EG Phoenix wants egg. to take this fight. Yeah, I mean, it's they yeah. do have split up, but they're not in position. They do not have egg up, though, I think. Hookshot comes good. in. Fada trying to get his oh. get split off. Will die in the end. Phoenix goes in, but no egg. EE. No BKB, he just has a, a lot of strength, and he's also going to die, and C9 <laughs> running towards the winds, everyone is just... Yeah. I mean, at this, this point, like, you, you, you can't fight this Caudal at this point. Like, uh, the cooldown is completely ignored because the Caudal wave just heals everyone up. Yeah. Um, he almost has a mech. Yeah. yeah. It's daytime for EG, the Caudal wave works. They actually killed the Panda before he got the split off. Yeah. Um, he was uh, a bit too far up. I, I think he didn't expect EG to react that quickly. There was very quick movement by EG. Yeah. Because he has a blink dagger, so he can just stay in the back lane and you just let the gyro be in front. And this Caudal guy just allows you to react quickly though, because you don't need to TP, you can just get recalled. And yeah. then you're instantly in position. Yeah. That's true. They are able to respond a lot quicker. Maybe not being able to realize the potency. I mean, even like a shocker recall to get yeah. two people there really quickly. Well, looks like Bone7 trying to switch game plans now. Go for a Midas and try and take it late. I guess that's C9's plan at this yeah, moment. C9 has uh, reorganized themselves. I think they do not have any chain creeps on the map right now. Are they trying for smoke? Oh. Smoke oh, ain't coming smoke. out. Sumail will get dusted up. Does have a Yules that will save him for just a brief second. I mean, now that they have Yules, they have, I guess, something else versus the Brewmaster. So I thought he was going Soul, uh, soul Booster. Yules is a very decent pickup. They can combinate their spells into Yules. It's very good defensively, too. 
Cloud9 trying to make a move for the upper tower again, and with Samael down, looks like EG are not interested in defending that. So they finally get something for their efforts, but yeah, at I this mean, point, C9 uh, understood that they cannot play in, play on the bottom lane at all. They have to play on, like you have yeah. to mirror your opponents, and this is what they've been doing. A little bit too late, but it still is giving them an, an opening in the game to come back. Unfortunately for Brewmaster, though, he he was on the uh, top of the network chart. Uh, a couple of minutes ago, but then he had the two deaths, the one in mid at the tower, and then the one where he just died top, so his farm is kind of lacking. And yeah. I feel like Brewmaster has to be one of these heroes that just need to get a BKB lots this game. Just yeah. jump in and create chaos. Uh, Looks like Klinks is also going for MKB. Just want to... They know they kill Brew, the fight is pretty much over, so yeah. I, I mean, I, he does need a BKB for sure. I mean, yeah, maybe at, he at can take At this point, EG is probably looking for Roshan. Like they, yeah. they know that they have a lot of map control. Like there is no business for C9 left at the top lane. They got the tower. Yeah. They're controlling bottom lane too. Oh, so one understands that though. One more smoke comes out. EG has a very good ward place though. Could I mean they have two wards and they have Caudal Vision. Yeah. So I mean they're not very vulnerable yeah, at this they're point. They're very confident. Universe will die. EE moves in to join the fight. Yeah, this is not what EG wanted. Universe overstepped a little bit. All you needed to do was stay a little bit back because they do have the caudal. I mean, if there's no way for C9 to easily go into them. Now C9 trek into the Roshan pit. There's, but there's no way they yeah. can do it against caudal. It just yeah. won't work. Like at most, they can delay it, but there was a very good chance for EG to actually take the Roshan. Yeah. But now they're probably they're, they're already looking for the fight now. Mm. Or the, a catch off at least. Yeah, they're going to recall Clockwork in three seconds. Yeah. What about Gyro's build? Do you think Sange first is right? Should he go on BKB like you think the Brew should have? Oh, well, he, he just wants to get this. Like, if you get BKB first and you blow your charges, like, he knows that he's not going to win the fights even with the BKB. So, there oh. we go. Fear tries to t kill EE, but too much damage coming out. Fada comes in. PBD tries to defensively disrupt, and Fear looks like he will pay for his sins. I feel like that's quite the unnecessary play from Fear. Yeah. Uh, there's no point in going for these kills. Yeah, all EG has to do is stay with the heroes together at this point. Like what we've seen in this patch, games end very early. When mm -hmm. when the teams understand that they should stay together, there's no point for solo plays. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sumail does combo. force out an egg with a nice Yule Split Earth into a Illuminate combo. Like uh, EG went with the the Klings and the Shadow Team, that's two heroes very far in, in C9's uh, lane. And C9 is obviously gonna be with four or five heroes at least. There's nothing else to do in the game. So pretty much you think EG had the perfect start in the first 12 minutes, and then as soon as the Kato Ags, they could have run away with the game, but they've made a couple of mistakes. No, that it's like... Set the, them back. The, they actually played very well up to the... Uh, they're still playing pretty good. Like, the clock didn't need to give away the Roshan like that, mm. and the go on the gyro was just over eager. They should just uh, relax. Sometimes you gotta relax. This is uh, the bane of every pro team that they do not chill enough. You gotta stay patient. Dota is a strategy game. Just stay patient and do the correct decisions. There's no gain on going a gyrocopter with the Klings and Shadow Demon. They're two heroes, and you don't see C9 on the map. They gotta be somewhere. So take it easy. Wait for a better opportunity to roast. Yeah, like EG is in a winning position anyway, yeah. and they know that too. Wait for daytime. So when you're in a winning position, there's even more reason to not take any risks. Yeah. C9 has pretty good vision up on the map. One in mid, but no eyes around the Roche pit. They're, they've actually used all four of their OBS. I think at this point, the uh, contesting Roche without a smoke is quite difficult. I mean, they don't have the egg either. Yeah. No, I don't think C9 is looking for the fight. Uh, I mean, Klink is soloing Roche at this point. Yeah. No death pack might be much more difficult now. It's gonna slow it down, but PPD is there to help. Yep, oh, has popped the strafe and C9 nowhere in sight. I'm wondering if Sickling is actually going for MKV, he might be just going for crit. I think yeah. that's a better choice. Like the butterfly is so far away for Gyrocopter. I hope he's going for MKV. Just well, to be it's sure. better versus uh it's better versus Brew. Ah, that's true. That's very true. 
Well, CNN has a good response to the Roche though. I mean, they un they understood that he's just uh, circling around the Roche pit and just trying to secure that area. So they go for the top lane and secure that tower instead. Which is, uh, I mean, as you said before, you need to make trades. Yeah, like the top lane is the best way to play for C9. Definitely. Like, EG is still sitting in the jungle. They've been just, they're just mirroring the C9 for the whole game at this point. Phoenix with Ghost Scepter pickup. Almost certainly versus the Clinks, but I mean, they still have a lot of magic damage on their side, too. I guess they have no field for that. Well, another smoke comes out. Looks oh, like they might clash. run into fear. Oh, that's, that's, they got him. Oh, the rocket flare. Well, he does have the Aegis. Egg comes out. Universe trapped in with Fada. Universe looks like he's going to die. And our defensive disrupt yeah, just... comes out. Fear respawns, but with no death pact. And it looks like another big team fight going into favor of C9 with all their ultimates up with another smoke and Fear gets lifted back in. Fada's Bruce split is down. Looks like they don't have no more detection for Fear. He will just run away. And EE dies on the right side. Fada looks like his blink is going to be disabled by another stun coming out. Oh, no, well, he does it miss. Up. I guess PPD was probably out of mana for poison there, but looks like they were going to get Fear there in the end twice, but a lack of detection. Wow. Yeah, it's quite unfortunate. Uh, but I think at, at that point where Fear already was not revealed anymore, I think Cena has to run for too long. Yeah. Because I think as soon as the split ends, they're just going to lose the fight. Yeah, they just overextend. They could have just killed Fear. I mean, he has like how much HP without his without his death pact? I mean, he has like maybe a thousand. They, they chased Universe to the right side a little bit. And yeah. that was... It's pretty hard to keep focus yeah. in these kind of fights. It's just way too chaotic. I mean, you saw PPD did a Shadow Poison, the disruption. It's because he was probably talking, like he needs to tell his focus on all these things. But it was a pretty good initiation though for C9, because yeah. Rubik pulled in the clinks into the power codes. And then they had them stuck there. Well, now with a Glimmer Cape on uh, one Keeper of Light, it's going to be much more difficult to burst Fear down. Probably doesn't even need a BKB this game. Well, Misery has stolen. This, this Coddle is going for Ocarine Core, it seems. Oh, He's goodness. going insane. I mean, the top three net worth on EG is just kind of ridiculous compared to what C9 <laughs> has right now. This Coddle is enjoying himself so much right now. <laughs> Misery goes in for a lift, but there's no follow-up. He will get stunned up after the Yules. But no detection up the hill. Still, Skeleton Walk in his arsenal. EG trying to make a high ground push. It is daytime, no Aegis. Ults are cooling off for Cloud9. Both of them will be up, the Egg and the Brew split. I would like uh, to see EG pick up a gem for this Coddle. Yeah, um, at this I agree. At this point, there's like really no reason not to uh, like abuse the Coddle Axe just gain superior map vision. If this Coddle has gem, then C9 will play on a blind map all game. Yeah. But C9 actually, they do have a gem. They have a gem. Looks like they will find PBD, his team he closely in port. tow. And we'll force that from away. Defensive disrupt. We see a couple of team members come out and looks like C9 are a little bit scared. Everyone gets recalled in. See Universe come in from the backside with a nice cogs. Oh my goodness. EE on the right side will die. Egg comes out in the middle. Fado with the Brewmaster split. Looks like Big Daddy going to die to Owie. And only two heroes down for C9 and looks like EG will clean up in the back lines. Gem, oh my goodness, Gem lost for Cloud9. That's about as bad as it gets for the fight. 4-0, Brewmaster the only one that lives, but not for long. And that is, I don't want to say the nail in the coffin, but I mean, they were really eager to go for a pick there. They go for the Shadow Demon and like, Universe was in the bottom lane, so was in the top lane. They get recalled and they just take a fight there with all their ultimates up. And yeah. I, I mean, at, at this point, it's it's just so difficult for C9 to fight the EG because uh, in the duration of the primal split, they have to kill pretty much every single member of EG. Otherwise, no one's going to die. Because Kala will heal them up, ST will have another disruption, there's going to be power cogs, there's going to be, you know, Clinton's going to be full health because he's death packed on the champ creeps and whatnot. I mean, so how do they kill anyone, though? They have they have Glimmer Cape, they have Mech, they have Coddle Heal, they yeah. have, like everyone built Tanky, like Clockwork also has a Glimmer Cape. That just ends onto it. It's just Keeper Light has 2,000 HP. Yeah. Clinks has 2,300. Oh, call down. EE -E trying to save his base from the devastation that EG wants to wreak. He's going to get the knife. Yeah. 
And the universe gets healed up to full because of that. Fear trying to go for a kill. MKB proc will finish EE off. Fought up with another blink in. Big Daddy gets trapped in a cog. The universe trying to beat him down. Fear will shoot some arrows, plink him away. Sumail goes for a stun on Bone 7. Bone 7 will also die. Another 4 0 for EG and a Rax to boot. Nighttime hits, but EG not scared to back off. Yeah, at this point, there's not much to do for C9. I gotta give it to EG though. It was uh, a really cool lineup. They, I, I was expecting a lot more pressure from the Chen and the Chen and the Rubik. Like they, like, they uh, traded form with the Coddle. Maybe yeah. they got a little bit unlucky with the Wildkin, but but actually that's like the, that was the biggest deal in the whole early game was the this Wildkin yeah. uh, thing going on. This Chen would have hit his timing so much earlier, and they would have started rotating with the Rubik and set the Coddle. Actually, he outleveled and outpumped the Chen. It's going to be a split, but nothing's going to happen. At this point, C9, I don't think they can kill any hero, actually. Like the, just too much defensive items at this point. Caudal Wave, Make Blinding Light, Disruption, Yules. Oh yeah, I forgot about Blinding Light too. They don't even have any... Uh, the, the Blinding Light is a huge deal yeah. in every team fight. They have no way to deal with it. The gyro doesn't have... Uh, does Gyro have BKB? I'm not sure. No. You went so for the SMY, which uh, I guess it's okay, but. I mean, it's, uh, if he goes BKB first, it's just gonna. It's still useless for him. Yeah. Like, there's no choices for him. He needs to. He, he needed to snowball with his team. There's the Octarine core. Let's look at these tasty cooldowns of his spells. And the wave is practically yeah. always up. See, I realized they can't win. Well, a fantastic draft coming out from EG. We doubted it a little bit at the start, but with a Caudal jungle completely interrupted, Aoi was on top of network for like 15, 20 minutes. Defensive cooldowns came out too much. Do you think that C9 made like any glaring errors in the game? Besides, of course, the Wildkin. Uh, I would still prefer the C9 lineup, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. easier to play. It's more effective to play. Like EG's lineup is really, really hard to play.